Our scripture reading this morning is going to come from John chapter 15, beginning in verse 12. In it, Jesus says, This is my commandment, love each other just as I have loved you. No one has greater love than to give up one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, and if you do what I command you, I don't call you servants any longer because servants don't know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends because everything I heard from my Father I have made known to you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you could go and produce fruit and so that your fruit could last. As a result, whatever you ask in my Father's name, He will give you. I give you these commandments so that you can love each other. May God add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, and the living of His Holy Word. Thanks be to God. Normally I read from uh, a physical Bible. I just tend to like it better. But today I picked up my phone because it was all I kind of had on me. And right in that moment, you get the little notification on your phone that tells you how much you've used it. And there's always like a little pang of guilt like, oh, geez, yep, yep, done. Your screen time is up and sometimes it's alarmingly up and maybe you've had that where you felt guilty about how much time uh, that you spent on your phone and maybe we've all had those stories i i, I recently went to a, a water park when i was on vacation back in early august uh, with my family and i if you know me i love water parks uh, but this was the first time at least that i had noticed that me and my children were standing in line and people had waterproof bags with their phone in it and as we were standing in line, you know, 75% of the folks in these very long lines, especially for the fun slides, were on their phone when they're in line. And I know it sounds strange, but with everything that goes on in daily life, especially with young kids, um, being on vacation with your kids is really great. But in a way, standing in line is really great because you know you're going to get to go do this fun thing. And at least in my experience, my kids actually talk to me when we're standing in line. When they get home from school and they get off the bus, they're obviously thinking about the next thing that they have to do, and they don't have time to care that their dad really wants to hear about their day. And when you're standing in line, you really have nothing else to do, and sometimes they just blurt out stuff and say things that you don't know. And it's nice to know uh, and to have that moment, but, you know, and it, let me suffice to say, and there are a lot of folks very, very busy with a great number of things. But there are a lot of us, when I look at, I see how much screen time I had on this phone, and I think of everybody wasting time <laughs> on their phones while they're standing in line. Um, it's just interesting that people seem to have less time to care about things in certain ways. And let me get to my point here, is that it seems today when you ask somebody uh, to do something, or to, you know, you're asking a favor of somebody, uh, it, it's almost harder to get people engaged to do those things, at least than it used to be. And I have no quantifiable way of measuring it. Just Pastor Don's kind of uh, two cents here when you go, because po folks are busy, I know, but folks seem to be even more inconvenienced when you ask to do something, especially if it's for church or for the sake of somebody else. I mean, it's always been a bit of a burden to do something for somebody else, but it seems to be even harder um, these days to get to do things, especially uh, with youth and sports and everything. Anyway, all I'm saying is sometimes our schedules get so full that we don't prioritize our ability to spend time caring for one another. And if our schedules are already so full that we can't have some flexibility to be aware and to make our lives conforming to the needs of somebody else. And every single day, if you're scheduled and your schedule is so rigid that there at no point can you be interrupted for the needs of somebody else. Case in point, one of the things I complain about, and I know I'm going to sound like an old man here. But when I got into the army, um, people didn't use phones. Well, the phones were kind of new when they were coming out. People didn't use them so much. Um, and that if you needed something from a soldier, you had to physically go to the barracks and you had to go find that soldier and go get them and do the things you needed. And things were done in person. And, and, and there was some, and, and this has helped in, in a lot of great ways, but in some ways it hasn't in that I remember I had a young soldier who, uh, I, I had a young leader who 
had a soldier who had a baby. I remember coming into work the next day and I asked that particular NCO, and I was his captain, and as NCO, if he went and checked on the soldier with the baby. He said, yeah, I did. Um, and I said, oh, great. And then after work that day, I went, took time, went to the hospital, visited the soldier with his baby, and I said, oh, did Sergeant so-and-so come and see you? He said, you know, he, he did text me. They told me to tell him if I needed anything. You know, the soldier wasn't mad about it, but it, it, because he was a younger guy, um, he appreciated me being there in person, but you know, the default for him was that, oh, someone checked on me, someone sent me a text on the phone. My question to you is, uh, which one says I love you just a little bit better? I've said these things to you so that my joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. This is my commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. I love this. No one has greater love than to give up one's life for one's friends. Now, oftentimes we think of that verse and we think of completely sacrificing our lives. I'm not even asking of that today. I'm just asking sometimes for folks to sacrifice a little bit of their life. Time. Enough to care for the needs of somebody else. I love this next verse. And I got to say this. No one has greater love than to give up one's life for one's friends. You are my friends. little foreboding there about what Jesus is going to do. He's literally going to give up everything he has, the greatest form of love for somebody else. And sometimes we can be so inconvenienced to be asked to do something for somebody else or to care about a group of people that frankly we think doesn't have much impact on our life. I recently got to talk to uh, a group of folks that I was trying to get to uh, care about people that they didn't even know. More specifically, I was trying to get them to care about many of the folks who struggle on the, bo on the, on the bottom of our socioeconomic spectrum, specifically here in downtown Canton. And these folks live way out in the suburbs and they have some really large houses and things. And, and, and there's, a, there's a big gap, there's a big divide there. And giving money is one way of caring. But I, I also make the case that having your feet follow your dollars is also another way, you know, to give up time, give up money, give up these things. Anyway, my point is, in the same way that I had seen, have seen, hopelessness in certain communities here in Canton, Ohio, either as a result of, um, of, 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 of substandard housing conditions, of crime in, their, in our streets, or, or, or just, the, just the very fact that, well, nothing's really going to turn the corner at the same time. I do a lot of fundraising with folks who do have means, and I see hopelessness on their side, too. Why bother? Why care? Don, what good is one more check going to make to your cause for housing or better food or those kinds of things for people? I got told by one person, he said, Don, I'm tired of giving to a losing effort. In other words, why care? Why care? Nothing's going to change anyway. I was had a nice uh, pastoral care visit this last week with a... a, a beloved uh, member of our church. And she was sharing this story with me about how her neighbor's um, wife unexpectedly passed away, very young, in her late 60s, uh, unexpectedly passed away. And prior to that time, uh, my, this woman and the neighbor had gotten very close. Over time, they'd been neighbors for some over 30 years. And every morning, this woman uh, goes to her front door and she, even in the winter time, you know, opens the door, um, except for the screen door, and every day. And I know this woman is a woman that at any point when that door is open, right, you can just come in. And I've been at this woman's house so many times, and I don't think I've ever been in this woman's house when there weren't other people there. And I said, you know, introduce myself and see who these folks are. And they're folks from down the road. Uh, they're folks, family from out of town. Uh, they're folks from, well, who knows, you know, kids that are just staying there for a couple of days because they had asked and those kinds of things. But every morning, this woman gets up, she opens up her door to leave the storm door right there as if to say, well, come on in. And she was sharing the story with me about her neighbor whose wife passed away. And now that man, um, at night, spending his first night alone, couldn't fall asleep. And all he could do was go into the kitchen, try to soothe himself, make a cup of tea, get something to eat, 
and sit in his living room and look across the street and wait for this woman to open up her door. And wouldn't you know, she said, as soon as I opened up my door, it wasn't two minutes later that he walked across the street. And we sat, and he didn't have much of a relationship with the church and things before. They invited him to have the funeral at the church. Of course they did, and this church held what was called, if you don't know what, uh, we used to call it a repast. And the women of the church got together and they made a meal for someone they didn't know. I've been a pastor of oh, really only two churches, and to me, the repast is one of the most beautiful ministries there is. Because people are so busy to not even attend uh, many times the funerals of a loved one who's passed, or, you know, they're somewhere and there's excuses. There's no room in their schedule to care. And the repast says more than care to me, because not only am I going to take time to go to the funeral, I'm going to take the time to organize and get people together, to get a community of people together, to care and show love for a group of people that they didn't even know. But friends, if the doors to our hearts aren't even open, to allow the person to come, to seek, to knock, to interrupt our lives and insert care for one another. In the case of John 15, one of those commandments, so that we could care, so that we could love. If our doors to our lives are shut with our phones and our schedules and everything else, we do not make room for Christ's joy to be complete in our hearts, to care. The world needs those who care. Christians should be people who fling open the doors of their hearts to be interrupted even in the midst of their own lives, to care for those who do not know. Because there is no greater love than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends, and you, you, you are my friends, is what Jesus says. All I'm asking this morning, friends, as you go about this week and you leave this Sunday online service, evaluate. Take a look at your calendar. See what you can cut out. What are you going to prioritize above the joy that Christ can give by making sure that you're prioritizing Christ's commandments and love and the ability to be flexible to the needs of others? Make time in your heart for care. Volunteer in our free store. Volunteer at any nonprofit downtown who's doing great and wonderful things to bring hope and healing and care to hundreds of people in this community. There are a bunch of ways that you can do that here at Crossroads in Canton for All People, either renovating housing, with, renovating housing with us, volunteering in our free store, in our fresh market, office volunteers, singing in our choir, any number of wonderful things to take time out to care and to open up yourself to the complete joy that Christ has to offer. Friends, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go with that commandment in mind that you love one another just as Christ loves us because we are His friends sent into the world to love in the same way. Friends, go in peace and have a great week.